Hey guys, how are you doing? Nice to see you. Nice to see you on this webinar. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. More people are coming. I'm happy to see this. I hope more people will join. In the meantime, I would appreciate if you guys send me a message uh, where you like tell me if you can hear me and see me. If you can confirm that the connection is uh, like, uh, if the connection is good. In the meantime, I'm watching. Uh, I'm watching the questions section for this. So feel free to throw me a message telling me, "Hey, Damien, we're." able to see you and hear you i will really appreciate this so i will know that you guys can actually hear me all right first one is here uh that's from dave all right there you go three people are re responding dave says uh i hear you uh uh Luis uh, Rivera says so oh, good and Kyriakos says able to hear and see you all right that's good news <laughs> that means everything is running well for now loud and clear says Hussein hey Hussein uh we had some fun discussions with Hussein during the last life analysis session I remember I did an analy analysis on the Euro Turkish Lira I believe this provoked some interesting discussions so I hope this time it's gonna be the same even better you know I expect more people to join furthermore uh, because the topic is like pretty hot and trending as you guys know today we're going to speak about Bitcoin and the name of the webinar is a new big guide to Bitcoin so yeah that's gonna be a fun topic the other thing that I want to share with you by the way is that I'm calling uh, I mean I'm going uh, Hussein says, yes, maybe will be future, mo uh, future money, I think he's saying. You never know what's going to happen, of course. So the interesting thing is that I'm currently going live for like from like very, very extreme conditions because guys, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, as you guys uh, probably know, I'm located in Bulgaria on the Balkans and currently here is like a winter disaster <laughs> the place I'm currently at um, currently is like thir minus 13 degrees Celsius minus 13 degrees Celsius the snow is reaching like more than one meter and the wind is like 80 kilometers per hour it's like a like a hell of a storm outside you know it's like a cold cold storm very very big storm and by the way I'm very surprised that I currently have internet and electricity <laughs> this is very surprising uh so yeah um by the way it will be no surprise if the electricity or the internet goes down so i'm currently like broadcasting from a laptop if the electricity goes down i believe my laptop will be able like to last for at least like 50 minutes something like that uh and i will quickly switch to mobile internet uh, because the conditions are very extreme here currently and uh, I'm currently located in Varna, Bulgaria. However, I'm in a village that is like uh, like 25 kilometers away from Varna and it's this high high like like 350 meters above the sea level and, and it's like a very very like even and flat ground over there, you know, so the wind is like blasting from all from all sides, you know, and many people actually will not be able to go to their houses <laughs> today probably because the storm is huge and the roads are closed i'm driving a very very big car by the way a, a jeep a jeep cherokee you know and I, I constantly get calls from friends of mine to get me ready eventually to go and save them with a shovel <laughs> to to dig out some snow or to like uh, pull out their car or something it's like uh, huge of a storm here currently so I see another comment from Dave. He said, I lived in Ukraine for 13 years and I understand what you're talking about. Hang in there with that weather. Yes, we do. We have uh, food, we have water, everything's all set because I assume we might be like locked in the village for say like a couple of days until they clean the roads. Although I have a big car, you know, and it has a lot of capacity like to run through snow and stuff. <laughs> but uh, yeah anyway all right 14 people already i'm very happy to see that more and more people are joining again i repeat the today's webinar is going to be 
about Bitcoin. It's called uh, uh, the New Big Guide for Bitcoin or Bitcoin New Big Guide. Uh, or Bitcoin guide for newbies, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I'm going to share some interesting topics uh, to you regarding uh, Bitcoin because it has been like very, very trendy topic. And I constantly see requests from people uh, that are interested in Bitcoin. They're asking me, hey, Damien, is this like a good investment? Uh, should I buy some Bitcoins? And I'm like, you know, <laughs> maybe I need to do a, like a webinar from general character. Uh, for you guys to like state some facts to you and like, like to state with you some eventual points uh also in this relation i would like to say because this is like very very important i would like to say that everything that you're gonna hear in this webinar uh has a general character and it's general advice and should not be considered a personal advice because we're not taking your personal financial uh, situation into consideration we're just giving like uh general advice um, analyzing the general situation in this case around uh, bitcoin and why is it so hot topic why is it so trending why are people so hyped what provokes this hype what are the price factors for bitcoin and so on and so forth guys so now i, I suggest that we proceed with uh, this webinar i assume you're able to see my screen as well because i'm currently checking the audience view and yeah i see that you're seeing our fancy forex boat logo all right guys great 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 hey by the way yesterday we launched a brand new course for you guys which is optimizing expert advisors on metatrader 4. uh it is a pretty nice course and since you're guys under the trader or the student membership program you all have access to this course so enjoy <laughs> that's the thing uh also uh we're gonna launch another new course in few weeks maybe and then we're constantly working on new and new courses and we're trying to expand our course database so being a member at forex bolt will definitely bring you like more and more educational materials without your actually paying paying more staying at the same membership plan so that's the beauty of the forex bolt you know membership program so all right guys let's proceed but first i'm gonna turn off my camera there you go. And now you're supposed only to see my voice. For this reason, I'm gonna switch to our disclaimer. And I would like to encourage you uh, to spend uh, like 30 seconds or a minute to go through this disclaimer and to make sure you understand this information. Uh, this way you will know that Forex Boat is a 100% regulated company legally and financially uh and we, we hold the respective licenses for this to give general advice so feel free to go through this disclaimer real quick all right in the meantime i'm checking up uh checking up my slides to see if everything's ready to go all right all right more people are joining i'm happy to see this Okay. Hey, and by the way, before you guys ask, I would like to share with you that this session is being recorded and then it's going to be uploaded at our website in the next couple of days, say. So, yeah, you'll be able to watch this webinar recording uh, uh, online. Uh, actually the people that are actually on the trader membership plan because student members will not be will not uh, do not have access to the webinar uh, database uh so what else do i have for you yeah we're still working on that uh, live events calendar that we would like to upload for you guys and whenever we upload uh, this live events calendar you will be able to access that calendar and see all live events that we're scheduling with for example for example this could be webinars this could be life analysis sessions. This could be like uh, giveaway promotions that we're creating, eventually webinar replays, uploading and so on and so forth. And this will be very convenient for you because when you see the date, you can click at it and then you can register for the respective event without actually uh, uh, without actually 
accessing some other external stuff. Also, you'll be able to put that event in your calendar. So you it will like your computer will be able to remind you for this. All right. Now let's switch to the webinar itself. I hope you all read the disclaimer, guys. So as I said, today we're gonna speak about Bitcoin. So the name of the webinar is Bitcoin Bitcoin Guide for Newbies. All right, so what are we going to cover in this webinar? There you go. This is the table of content. First, I'm going to uh, briefly explain to you what guy so Bitcoin is. Then we're going to switch to the topic which we'll share with you uh, if uh, we're able to pay with Bitcoin. I will also speak about Bitcoin mining. I will name some of the Bitcoin price factors, in my opinion, uh, doing also a fundamental analysis of Bitcoin. Then I'm going to pop up a chart, say a trading view chart, and I'm going to do a brief technical analysis of uh, Bitcoin. Uh, in the meantime, we will also speak about why Bitcoin is a risky investment. So these are like the points that I am going to cover in this webinar. Notice that since Bitcoin is like um, very, very, uh, say like uncertain topic, everything that I'm going to uh, I'm going to say here is like actually something like my personal opinion uh, about uh, some stuff. And these are not like. Uh, like uh, advices or something about that. I'm just going to share my my personal point of view as a market analyst as and uh, about uh, this currency that is currently trending so much and so much. And, and I'm simply going to like create something like an analysis for you guys in order to be able to give you like a better picture of what actually Bitcoin is and cryptocurrencies uh, in general. All right. So let's go. Let's start. What is Bitcoin? So the first thing that I uh, form for you guys is like uh, something like a description about the Bitcoin in a simple sentence, which is Bitcoin is a first digital currency, second, that is decentralized, and third, encrypted. So Bitcoin is a digital currency that is decentralized and encrypted. The biggest advantages of Bitcoin are that all the transactions that are conducted with Bitcoin, they're person to person. This means that no banks are actually involved in these uh, transactions, which uh, uh, respectively leads for uh, to significantly lower fees when you conduct a transaction. For example, when you do a bank transfer, you have like the respective fees. But when you do a Bitcoin transaction, the fees are not that high. Uh, also, Every person stores his Bitcoins in a digital wallet that could be uh, like, um, say, your personal computer or your Mac, <coughs> also your mobile phone or your tablet <coughs> or whatever. Also, payments are extremely simple, uh, as simple as sending a, uh, like a standard email. That's it. Uh, also, with Bitcoins, on theory, you can purchase anything. But then when we go through the slides, you will understand that this is like a pretty relative saying you know on theory yes you can purchase anything as long as there is somebody that will send you that anything in exchange for bitcoins uh then bitcoins again on theory physically could be used in every country but this of course should happen uh under the supervision of the respective authorities because regulations may apply in different countries and so on and so forth also you cannot get your Bitcoin account frozen again on theory because you're storing it on your mobile phone. If you get your like mobile phone confiscated by a say a legal authority, maybe you can get your account frozen. Although they're like currently being stored in clouds and stuff, but I mean you need to be messed in something really bad if this happens to you. Uh, also, there are like several cryptocurrency exchanges where you can exchange your bitcoins for other currencies maybe you can exchange it for other cryptocurrencies or you can exchange it for American dollars or euro or Japanese yen or whatever is available on that exchange also there is I mean all the Bitcoin transactions are like conducted through a secured network that is uh, like uh, say built and stored by the Bitcoin miners another topic that I'm gonna talk about and also the Bitcoin software contains a uh, hundred percent open source code and everyone could actually enter that uh, uh, that that software and actually examine it and see what is behind that software so the next subtopic is can I pay with Bitcoin so the answer is yes and no 
I will tell you why is this. There are companies that accept Bitcoin. For example, some of the biggest like companies that accept Bitcoin are Microsoft. You can like buy various Microsoft products with Bitcoin. For example, some Xbox products or video games or whatever. Shopify, another big retailer that accepts Bitcoins. Overstock, Reddit, the the big uh, like travel uh, giant Expedia, and also some food stores. For example, I, I read in the internet now that for uh, for example example some subway uh, shops they accept uh, bitcoin as well as uh, some kfc shops accept bitcoin so pretty much there are some places where you can spend uh, bitcoin however why i said yes and no in my answer i said yes because yes there are really companies that accept bitcoin and which can actually sell you something uh, in exchange of your bitcoins however no because there are still many and even more and more and more companies, institutions, financial institutions and whatever, which do not accept Bitcoin. So this is why the answer is yes or no. On theory, you can pay with Bitcoin. But on practice, if there is no party that wants to accept your Bitcoins in exchange of the good that you're looking for, then you're like pretty much like trapped, you know. So. This is why the answer is yes and no. Then I'm going to switch to the next topic about Bitcoin mining. So what is Bitcoin mining? You, you've probably heard about that, that uh, there are people that mine Bitcoins and do something with their computers in exchange of Bitcoins. Yeah, that is true. Uh, and as I said, the Bitcoin network and transactions are secured by these miners. Actually, miners like offer their hardware machine to connect to the like to the to the global bitcoin network and actually offer their capacity of uh for mining for conducting bitcoin transactions so every bitcoin transaction is actually backed <laughs> in the machine of some of the miners uh so in the past people were able to mine bitcoins with their personal computer However, currently things don't stay that don't 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 uh, stay that way, and the reason for this is that the difficulty of Bitcoin mining is getting harder and harder. And I'm gonna tell you a couple of things now. First, uh, every miner, Bitcoin miner, can mine Bitcoins with a certain speed. Uh, that speed is measured in uh, I think it was hashes, like like uh, kilo hashes, mega hashes, and so on and so forth. The higher the speed, the more you mine. However, uh, your mining speed depends on the capacity of your machine. As I said in the past, they were personal computers. Currently, they sell like uh, machines that are built uh, uh, specially for Bitcoin mining. And also, with the time, the more Bitcoins are mined, the higher the difficulty of the mining becomes. And honestly, I hear a lot lot of opinions and people saying that uh, Bitcoin mining is not that profitable anymore and there are like uh, alternative currencies to be mined. Uh, also, so for example, let's say the Ethereum. I believe the Ethereum, uh, you're still able to mine Ethereum with your personal computer. However, I mean, your computer, a mining computer would not look the way as like a laptop or a standard computer looks. It's usually like an open like box of a pc a stationary pc and then like video cars going out of <laughs> on a shelf or something like that this is like a mining machine uh, and for example ethereum is like uh, being best mined with uh, video cards so as far as i know one mining machine can like contain many many video cards that are mining this ethereum for example uh, which is giving more and more speed to the miners the thing is that and the main problem in mining is that, yeah, you can mine a lot. You can mine uh, like uh, big amounts of, bit I mean, relatively big amounts of Bitcoin converted in money. However, the trick is to be able to beat your electricity bill, because the more you mine, the higher electricity bill you're paying, because these mining machines are actually supplied by a big load of electricity. And then if you're like a big miner, it's very likely that you get a electricity bill of like thousand dollars or more. So if, if you get an electricity bill of one thousand dollars and then you mine bitcoins for say eight hundred dollars, then this is a two hundred dollars loss for you. So the trick is that you optimize your machine in 
in a dial way so you will be able to beat your electricity bill and then the difference between your revenue in bitcoins or in cryptocurrency and the electricity bill is actually your gross profit that you're generating from uh from mining bitcoin or mining cryptocurrency whatever it is the important thing is that uh nowadays bitcoins in circulations if i'm not wrong are around uh, 17 million bitcoins i'm not talking about dollars i'm talking about 17 million bitcoins and currently the price around ten thousand dollars i believe so if we multiply 17 million by 10,000, this will give us uh, ooh, a big number. Is it like uh, how many zeros are behind that? I think two more is like maybe 17 billion or even more than 71 point. Yeah, 170 billion, probably something like that. I'm gonna calculate it because there are like a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of zeros. All right, so I'm currently, yeah, that's my calculator. You're able to see it now. All right, so 17 million bitcoins currently times $10,000. Ooh, many zeros, right? So this is, what is this like? Uh, 170 billion bitcoins. Uh, 170 billion dollars are actually mined in uh, bitcoins. Uh, like taking into consideration the the nowadays price yeah i see a comment here for her from uh from tissue dude that's hard to read <laughs> that's probably a nickname yeah who says like 170 billion yeah that's that's totally true and as i already said the more miners mine the harder it gets to mine the thing is that the maximum bitcoin supply that is programmed by the Bitcoin network is 21 million Bitcoin. So this is something like a limit. I have no idea what's going to happen when all the Bitcoins are uh, will get mined. Probably, I'm not sure if they're able like to increase the maximum supply or they're going to simply like start mining other currencies and so on and so forth. But this is something that we can like uh, think of if we consider a Bitcoin investment. So I'm switching to the next slide where I'm going to show you like a Bitcoin uh, miner. Or how it looks like in the past it was like a regular pc something like that currently this is how a bitcoin miner looks like you know the one that you see at the bottom this with the big fan and stuff this is like a big machine that is actually uh produced to, especially to mine bitcoin all right and it is all about the electricity so enough about bitcoin mining now i'm going to switch to bitcoin price factors all right so as I said, Bitcoin is extremely trending topic nowadays. Everyone is speaking about Bitcoins and blockchain. A lot of Bitcoin entrepreneurs like uh, appeared and blockchain entrepreneurs and so on and so forth. So the thing is that there is an extremely high demand interest for Bitcoin. The reason for this is that a lot of people believe that this is the innovation and this is the future. Honestly, this is what I believe in too. I mean, this is my opinion. This is really the future. In my opinion, we're, we're all gonna pay with something like that uh, in the near future, maybe. Second thing is that people are extremely greedy. A lot of people wanna uh, wanna like attach to the quick get rich scheme, you know, and to get rich uh, quickly. And the third point is that there is uh, like a big, <laughs> I mean, uh, most of the criminal activity nowadays, as far as I know, uh, is conducting transactions uh, between each other, uh, like with uh, Bitcoins. As you guys probably know, the internet that we are actually surfing through on a daily basis is only like like five percent of the five or ten percent of the available like uh, web space or websites uh, in the net. The other ninety percent are all hidden hidden encrypted and should be like uh, opened with special encrypted browsers and they're basically contain uh, like uh, uh, information I mean they it, it's pretty it's basically about conducting criminal activity so people that surf in the dark net in the dark web I believe was the right uh, term uh, uh, they're pretty much they can pretty much purchase uh, anything related to criminal activity from over there like guns and drugs and so on and so forth and all this criminal activity all the transactions are, are being conducted in uh, in uh, in cryptocurrency so this is uh, another uh, factor that we should not forget when we talk about Bitcoin because 
see this, the currency that stays behind like most of the maybe, I, I cannot say most, but maybe a big part of the criminal activity nowadays. Uh, the second important Bitcoin price factor is that uh, we should not forget this because this is very important. The Bitcoin has, although you can pay some stuff with Bitcoin online, in general, Bitcoin has extremely low liquidity, meaning that uh, Bitcoin is not a liquid uh, financial asset or financial instrument. The reason for this is that nowadays with Bitcoin, you cannot pay your bills. You cannot pay your household bills. You cannot pay also your mortgage. Uh, also, you cannot pay your college or the college uh, of your children and uh, so on and so forth. Oh, I see a comment from Hussein. He says, Dark web now use live coins. That's why uh, that's what I heard. Yeah, that that's true. I mean, they're actually using all type of cryptocurrency. But I mean, uh, I believe that maybe the instant hype of the Bitcoin price came from the maybe eventually from the dark web activity because it appeared pretty much from nowhere. Uh, and then maybe the other people and the overall people's interest actually uh, like ride that hype until the price reached like approximately. 20,000 American dollars. So yeah, what I was talking about is that although you can buy some stuff, say you can buy an Xbox game with Bitcoin, you, you still cannot pay your bills, cannot pay your mortgage and cannot pay your college with uh, Bitcoin. And actually these three things that I said are uh, determining the financial situation uh, in different countries. They're also uh, determining, uh, say like, uh, uh, different like economic factors that are responsible for the movement of, uh, of currency. So these are like extremely important points that determine the liquidity of a financial instrument. Uh, all right. So what about that? What happens? So this is what happens in my opinion. So whenever the interest is very high and liquidity is very low, this creates exponential growth. Then this, then the, the financial instrument in, in this case, uh, say Bitcoin or other cryptocurrency is, is likely to create a correction or a drop which represents a desperation. So a hype, desperation, hype, desperation. And guys, take, take a look at the picture at the, at the right side. This That picture represents a standard economic cycle. There you go. It starts with a peak, recession, throw, recovery, and then again, peak. This is how the economy acts. And the reason for this is that uh, people are actually greedy. I mean, people want to like own uh, more than they can actually afford. And this is why the economy gets boosted. Uh, and then this is why the economy enters a recession and goes uh, and goes through. Uh, like it happened in 2008, you know, this is like, a, these are like standard uh, economic cycles, which we cannot avoid. And they're all provoked by the psychology of the human, of the human being, you know? Uh, and it, in in my opinion, acts the same way with Bitcoin. However, we should not forget that Bitcoin is not an economy and it's a currency. However, this currency does not represent an economy, economy like, a, like a standard currency. For example, behind the, the American dollar, you have the United States of America. Behind the euro, you have uh, not Euro, but the eurozone. Behind, say, Japanese yen, you have, you have Jap Japan and so on and so forth. I mean, these currencies are backed by these economies and they're actually competing on the financial market. And actually, do you know a currency that has been growing forever? Because uh, currently I don't for now. And uh, it is uh, very strange, in my opinion, that a price of something like the Bitcoin, which is claimed to be a currency, uh, for now, it's uh, like in increasing on a, on a such a on a such a intensive pace. For this reason, I'm, I'm going to show you now three charts that represent the three separate Bitcoin hypes throughout the years. So the first hype appeared at the beginning of 2013, at the left side, 2013, where the price of the Bitcoin jumped like say from like uh, 20 bucks or 15 bucks to something like almost uh, above $200, like $260. Uh, and then the price decreased uh, sharply. Again, in 2014, actually this is the 2000, end of 2013, 2014, the price created the abs absolutely the same cycle. There you go, exponential growth and then the depression comes. And now in 2017, we have absolutely the same thing. There you go, you see the price jumps, and then it corrects or it, it decreases. You cannot say it's 
something is a decrease or a correction until you see like the following move that appears afterward. So in 2014, the price reached, uh, say like, uh, uh, I think it was like uh, $1,200, something like $1,200. And in 2017, we saw the Bitcoin going above $19,000, hitting the, the zone around the psychological resistance level of $20,000. And now, to try to prove my point that the Bitcoin price is generally currently moved by people's interest, and I believe it is uh, maybe provoked by the overall greed of people, I'm going to share something with you that I actually shared in our private trading group, and probably many people saw it. Uh, but this time I created like more thorough research and I found like a bigger chart. Uh, this is uh, a chart that represents the overall search intensity of the word Bitcoin in Google. So the source I used is Google Trends. Of course, whenever I type Bitcoin in Google Trends, this is what I get when I switch to a big chart in the past like 10 years. There, there you go. The, the, the searching of this term in 2013 is like relatively bigger than the, the previous activity in, in terms of searching that term. In 2014, it's even bigger. And in 2017, is like the peak that we're currently seeing. Take a look at this. 2013, 2014, 2017. Then 2013, 2014, 2017. There you go. But notice that now in 2018, people are not searching Bitcoin much. You know that the search and the interest like uh, decreased. Why, why is this? I mean, Probably because the price dropped, and when the price is low, people are not that interested because it's not a hot topic. I mean, what, I mean, whatever there's no gold, you know, people are not interested. Uh, uh, well, this is like a normal uh, psychological factor, in my opinion, because people w wanna like uh, possess, wanna own, wanna have like expensive stuff, and they're interested in expensive stuff. That's like the the normal human nature, like to to be honestly, that's the thing, to be greedy, you know. And in my opinion, this is what is boosting the Bitcoin price, the people's interest. And if the price, uh, say, if the price jumps now to 30,000 American dollars, then the hype is going to be even bigger and the, the searching of this term is going to get even higher because a lot of people are getting interested in this. They want to know what is it about. They want to check if there is some kind of investment opportunity for them. They, they want to learn how to mine it, how to own it, how to get rich and so on and so forth. So now, what happens for real with all this information? So I like divided this into four points, in my opinion. First, people buy bitcoins, which creates the demand, which uh, in this relation, you know, boosts the price, creating the price hypes, right? Then point number three, people cannot spend their bitcoins because the liquidity is low. They cannot pay your, their mortgage. They cannot pay uh, their college. They cannot... Uh, uh, they cannot pay their bills and so on and so forth. And then people sell Bitcoin. Normal supply demand reaction, which creates the so-called cycles. In in my opinion, this is this this is uh, what I think. And let's say, for example, because all the people that most of the people that invest in Bitcoin, they want to get like really rich, like say in the near future. And let's say if, if this happens to somebody, what are you going to do if you have now, for example, uh, what is that? Uh, say 100,000 Bitcoins or 1,000 Bitcoins. Let's calculate. Calculator. There you go. I'm opening it now. All right. There you go. Let's say you have uh, 100,000 Bitcoins times $10,000. What are you going to do with what, what what's that did i calculate this correctly yeah what are you going to do with one billion dollars i mean not, not what you're going to do but how are you going to convert ten thousand bitcoins into one billion dollars what are you going to do i mean you can find somebody to convert say like a uh some kind of a decent amount you know on like small portions and so on and so forth if you find a buyer on that price because this is like pretty, pretty hard probably but what how are you going to convert 10,000 bitcoins into American dollars so you can like start living living like the dream you know this is the hard point in my opinion even if it's like um, because currently I'm located in uh, in Bulgaria say I have like 1,000 bitcoins or all right let's say 100 bitcoins 10 uh, uh, times 10,000 dollars this is 1 million dollar I mean this is like something that is a, a little bit more convertible in my opinion but still I will need to conduct like a very 
be very uh, hard research in order to convert such a big of an amount. I mean, it is very easy to con to like to convert a couple bitcoins, two bitcoins, or three bitcoins. Yeah, that could be done pretty easy. You know, in every uh, on every Bitcoin platform. I mean, like uh, say like local bitcoins and so on and so forth. Yeah, this could be done. Uh, but big amounts, you know, people that want to like own a fortune, and I think this is like a little bit brave to be uh, to be done, in my opinion. And in my in my opinion, this is what conducts the big the big hype. I mean, people's people buying Bitcoin. Some of them are actually uh, generating profit, indeed. But some of them who generate profit are actually unable to convert eventually their Bitcoin because it, it's not that easy to to conduct that transaction. I mean, if you want to convert like uh, 0.5 Bitcoins into like uh, say like five thousand dollars, yeah, that's pretty easy. But if you want to convert 10 10 Bitcoins, that's going to be a little bit harder. And having in mind that the price is fluctuating so hard you, you you don't want to hold these bitcoins forever in my opinion because if you hold them today and today the price is ten thousand dollars tomorrow it can be like two thousand dollars you never know we see this every day happening uh with the bitcoin which brings me to the next topic why is bitcoin a risky investment and i have a couple answers for this question the first answer is that the bitcoin volatility is extremely high like on basis it fluctuates like with 20 percent 30 percent uh 50 percent sometimes and so on and so forth uh and the second thing is that it is extremely hard to predict in the long term this is what i think because nobody knows what's gonna happen actually uh next year i mean a lot, a lot of people say that the bitcoin might actually hit eighty thousand american dollars for one bitcoin or one hundred thousand american bitcoin but i mean actually nobody can tell that i mean even the, the american dollar that is like so hardly backed by an economy you know it is so hard to what is left for like a currency that is actually not backed by, by a real economy and actually is currently being uh, controlled only by people's uh, supply and demand what happens about that so this brings us to one important notice that i want to make for you guys and this is if you guys don't know what you're doing simply don't do it because this could put you in a real trouble i mean and i would like to underline this for you guys because this is very important if, if you're really not uh, aware uh, what this is about and you're not properly educated what to do with bitcoin or how to invest and so on and so forth it might be better if you don't do this in my opinion and also i would like to make another statement if you hold a risky investment for a long time, then you're exposing yourself to that risk for a longer period of time as well. Because the longer you hold that, <laughs> that financial asset, uh, the longer you're taking that big risk. So this is what I think about the Bitcoin. And uh, I believe that actually Bitcoin could be like a good investment, but for a short term. If, if you perform some, some kind of a short term analysis, Yes, you might be able to predict the price, but I hear like pretty brave statements from from the type of say like uh, people say that the Bitcoin might climb above fifty thousand dollars or above eighty thousand dollars or can hit one hundred thousand dollars. I mean, I cannot say that this will never happen. It, it might happen. I don't know. I really don't know. But I mean, uh, I I cannot only say that it it will happen. You know, so nobody nobody can tell you that for sure. In my opinion, I mean. The only thing that I know is that Bitcoin is currently provoked by people's hype uh, and the people's interest in this uh, financial instrument. And the more people are searching it, the higher the price gets until the uh, until the supply for Bitcoin is being exhausted and all the people hold the Bitcoin and then the price phew, collapses down. I mean, this is how I consider like uh, the economic factor behind Bitcoin. And in my opinion, it makes sense. Uh, I don't know if, if you guys uh, want to share something feel free to write in the comments I would like to hear your point of view because I said that uh, whatever I'm currently saying I don't think it's like 100% uh, I mean I, I don't think that it's I'm not 100% sure that if it, if it's, it is correct or not but it's just a personal point of view and this is what I'm currently observing so I want to do a calculation for you in order to prove some of my points regarding uh, why I personally don't believe the price can go so high, say 
80,000 American dollars, as some of the people say. There you go. What will happen if the price of the Bitcoin goes to 80,000 American dollars for one Bitcoin? So we currently have like 17 million Bitcoins in circulation, which times 80,000 American dollars creates 1.36. Oops, that's a mistake of mine. 1.36 trillion dollars, by the way, is what I wanted to what I wanted to write over here. So I apologize about that number. Let's let's see if I'm able to if I'm able to fix it. It. Uh, all right, give me a second. All right, now you're seeing a blue screen until I fix the error. 36. Uh, and there you go. All right, that's my presentation. Going back to whatever I was. All right. There you go. So. If the price of the Bitcoin for real goes to 80,000 American dollars, this is like 17 million Bitcoins in circulation times 80,000 American dollars. This creates 1.36 trillion dollars in Bitcoins in circulation. And this is like nearly all the American dollars in circulation, in circulation currently. I believe they're like 1.6 trillion American dollars in circulation something like that eventually it's it's pretty big and uh, yeah i see a question for from a person or a comment if you invest a value you're prepared to lose why not yeah you're absolutely right and this is like uh what all type of currency investing is about if if you don't invest money you're not ready to lose that's that's point number 1 rule number 1 you should never invest money you're not ready to lose but in my opinion, whenever you invest money, I mean, if you want to do it like the smart way, you can, you should always like measure like your, uh, your, you should always measure your outcomes. You're, you should always measure the risk you're taking and you should always try to hedge that risk in the best possible way. If you're act, if you actually care about your personal wallet, you know, if you care about your bank, if you care about your balance in your account and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, I believe this is the right way, but actually if, if you're like ready to lose a big amount of money, I mean, you can like do whatever you want. That's the thing, but you're totally right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but, but my point was uh, that, uh, my point about that in relation to this comment was that uh, I don't think it's very safe to hold Bitcoin for a long period of time. I mean, and the reason for this is that uh, the price of the Bitcoin is currently being, uh, say, not controlled by but provoked by people's interest and nothing else. Because if a currency starts getting crazy, a standard currency, like a paper currency, like the American dollar, the Euro, uh, the Japanese yen, and so on and so forth. If some of these currencies start getting crazy, the respective government take measurements against this craziness. They can like, uh, uh, they can like uh, you know they can print money they can increase interest rates which are like the major regulators of uh, uh, of inflation or currency getting crazy and in bitcoins uh, yeah maybe they can eventually increase the capacity of bitcoins above 21 million bitcoins but I mean you cannot control interest rates over there uh, also you cannot control banks and so on and so forth so this is like very very hard to be controlled and this is what I wanted to say. The, the price is so liquid and the hype is so big because actually people are currently riding the Bitcoin. And this is my opinion. Uh, actually, the price of the Bitcoin is not increasing by itself like that, you know, from nothing. It is increasing because people are actually looking for this financial asset to, to like to acquire somehow. This is uh, my opinion about this. And all I said here provokes some very important questions that I believe everyone should ask himself. The first question is, can $1.36 trillion be generated out of thin air? And how many people uh, is this amount going to make rich, you know? Second, can a currency increase eternally? I mean, I'm, I'm not talking that it will not stop at some point, but like starting at 10 bucks for Bitcoin and increasing to like uh, $20,000 for one Bitcoin and making forecasts eventually to be increased about... Uh, around 80,000 and so on and so forth. I mean, this is like, a, this is a, a question we need to ask ourselves. Three, how will rich Bitcoin owners spend their Bitcoins 
when it is not liquid. What are you going to do with many Bitcoins? You cannot pay your mortgage. Again, I'm saying you cannot pay your bills. You cannot pay your bank loan. You cannot pay uh, your college fund for your child or something like that. You can you cannot go in the grocery store today. I mean, and uh, and buy potatoes <laughs> with bitcoins. Maybe you can in, in some like in, in not that in, in some stores maybe you can, but in most of the stores you cannot. In Bulgaria currently you cannot do this. And uh, the fourth question is will governments let all this happen will governments let 1.36 trillion dollar be generated out of thin air and for example second American dollar size or something like that these are the questions that you need to ask yourself if uh, if you are want to undertake like a big investment in Bitcoin uh, for the long term this is my personal uh, opinion about that uh, many people will say uh, eventually that uh, in future bitcoin will get more and more liquid you know in future because this is the future as i said i believe that this is probably the future about uh, about currency digital currencies are very likely to take over and uh, to be the major like uh, source of transactions and so on and so forth i believe in this really however if the bitcoin gets liquid in people are actually able to conduct adequate transactions with Bitcoin, do you think that the price will be like $20,000 for one Bitcoin or $10,000 for one Bitcoin? And do you think that the price of one Bitcoin will go to $80,000 if it becomes liquid, if people are able to spend it, say, for, for college, for bills, for mortgage, for other type of loans and so on and so forth? If, if actually your, if, if your grandmother needs money and you need to send her money, uh, and if she knows how to spend these bitcoins, do you still think that the price is going to be like such so high? In my opinion, if Bitcoin is liquid, the price is not likely to be that high because currently the price of the Bitcoin, in my opinion, is a little bit crazy. A lot of people refer to the term bubble, the well-known term bubble, that Bitcoin is a bubble that's going to like pop up and make a lot of people desperate and cry <laughs> eventually. Uh, I don't want to refer to that exact term, but uh, I believe these four questions that I wrote to you on the screen are definitely something that everyone who considers investment in Bitcoin needs to needs to take into consideration. And the reason for this is that Bitcoin is like uh, uh, has extremely low liquidity and extremely high volatility. So whatever you're risking in terms of capital, in terms of money uh still you need to consider what you're going to do with your potential profit when you do it you need to be 100 percent sure that you're able to spend this in an adequate way or you'll be uh you'll be able to convert your bitcoin in a liquid currency in order actually to to have some advantage of it. if you think that you're going to spend only bitcoins for your living say in the next five years i don't think this is like very possible maybe uh i mean uh because currently in bulgaria i cannot buy an apartment with bitcoins really i mean maybe i will find a guy <laughs> but i mean i will not i will not have much of a choice uh and uh in my opinion this is like a, <laughs> an extremely big problem for the bitcoin liquidity all right so guys i would like to ask you uh, i would like to encourage you now to ask of any kind if you have and in the meantime uh i am going to pop up a chart and I'm going to conduct a technical analysis for the Bitcoin, uh, where uh, I believe uh, we'll be able to discuss some technical topics because afterward, Forex Boats are Forex Trading Academy, and we need to do that type of analysis because people are interested. And also, I love doing technical analysis, really. So now I'm going to pop up a chart. I'm currently launching it. In the meantime, again, I encourage you to ask questions of any kind whatever you want to ask me about the Bitcoin. If, if, if I have uh, the capacity to answer, I would love to. So yeah, let's open Bitcoin American dollar. Uh, Bitcoin American dollar provided by uh, the Bitstamp exchange. Uh, and the chart you're currently looking at is a standard uh, trading view chart uh, all right 
So I'm currently opening that chart because it, it gives us like a pretty pretty nice view of the Bitcoin. So this is the hype uh, that is currently riding since 2017. There you go. The price increases June, July, August, September, October, November, and in December around Christmas, actually the hype was highest. Actually, not yeah, actually not around Christmas, but uh, around mid of December the price was highest than ever. It was like 19,000, what is that? 681 American dollars for a single uh, Bitcoin. All right, I see a few questions over here. Uh, Hussein says, uh, do you think governments will make their own digital currency? Uh, phew, I believe it's a good idea. <laughs> Maybe eventually it's a good idea. Uh, but I cannot say if the governments will really want to make this or uh, not. But since the world is definitely going in that direction, uh, I think it's a good idea, definitely. Uh, Lynn Gray says, beautiful. Yeah, it is beautiful. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, it is beautiful because actually the people who who bought it at, <laughs> say, like $300, because a few years ago it was $300, one Bitcoin, you know? And it was not long ago, it was like a couple of years ago, even like less than uh, a year and a half ago, it was like $3,000, uh, like $300. I'm going to show you when. Uh, 500, uh, 490, la, 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 la. There you go. First hype over here came. <laughs> there you go. What is this? There you go. $357 in January 2016. This is like a couple years ago, you know? All right, another, another question I see. What kind of news or fundamentals is needed for Bitcoin to break the two to the 20,000 uh, resistance? So I will try to answer this question in more of a like a fundamental way. So in order the Bitcoin to, to break the $20,000 resistance, first I believe, uh, uh, this whole cycle needs to be repeated again. In order this cycle to be repeated again, people need to be hyped again and to buy all the Bitcoins again. However, who is going to buy all the Bitcoins on that price? That, that's my opinion. Who's going to buy a Bitcoin on $20,000 with the expectation that the price is going to go even higher? I mean, maybe there are people that want to do this and are planning to do this. But at the end, when we do the calculation, the number of Bitcoins in circuit, Population multiplied by 20,000 American dollars, you're going to see the number of American dollars needed to be spent from people in order uh, in, in order to be able like to create the, the needed demand for this. Uh, so in my opinion, people need to get hyped again and people need to believe a lot that the Bitcoin price is going to go above $20,000 in order to do this and actually to push the price. Because as I said, in my opinion, currently the Bitcoin price, as every like every other currency price, is actually provoked by supply and demand. But the Bitcoin price is actually provoked by pure supply and demand without having like a back regulation factor behind it. Because standard currencies like American dollar, Euro, Japanese, and they're actually they actually have the respective economy behind that currency. And this economy is actually trying to put things in order. Because if your currency gets cheap, say that the if the, the euro gets extremely cheap, say that one euro costs like, uh, uh, say that uh, one dollar costs like five euro. I mean, the, the people in the eurozone will get crazy. Nobody will be able to convert their euros in, in American dollars because it's going to be pretty expensive to do this. So the import and export of goods in American dollar becomes extremely hard if there is no balance in this thing. So this is what uh, economies actually do to, to like ensure this balance and this like same market equilibrium. This is like the economic way to say this. And with Bitcoin, there is no such way. Uh, say that, as Hussein said, if every government creates their own digital currency, then then we will have like government against government uh, in on the digital currency market, which makes some sense. And we're gonna have some balance. I mean, we, we will simply like have things uh, digitalized. I mean, it's pr it's pretty much that way because, as I said, like like. Uh, the, the American dollars in circulations are around 1.6 trillion American dollars. However, there's like even bigger, 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 bigger amount, which is like expressed in uh, in liability, in credit, something like that, you know? And uh, th these stuff are still exchanged in a digital way. I mean, you can always open your phone and send a PayPal payment and so on and so forth. And 
honestly, I don't. I, I I see not that much of a difference because we have actually achieved like this way of uh, spending money, in my opinion, through PayPal or through sending like uh, uh, like money through mobile applications, your bank mobile application, and so on and so forth. So Len Gray says the more people who hate banking fees will move to Bitcoin, so the demand could be endless. Uh, could be endless. Uh, well, yeah, Len, you're right. You're right. People hate fees. Exactly. People hate fees. But when the market is extremely competitive, fees get lower and lower. The only fee, <laughs> I mean, the most, uh, the biggest fee that people who use Bitcoin hate, and this is like the eventually the VAT or, or the income income tax or something like that. Because with Bitcoin, I mean, nobody can. I mean, it's very hard to track if you own any money or something like like that. Because uh, nowadays there are like many many payment processors that uh, uh, you can use to send money for relatively low fees. And uh, in my opinion, this is kind of acceptable. Maybe, yeah. But yeah, I, I believe uh, you're right about that. The more people hate banking fees, the more people will use Bitcoin. That is totally correct. However, in my opinion, the demand could not be endless. And the reason for this is that people are not endless. We're like 7 billion, and I don't think that more than 1 billion or 2 billion are able to use Bitcoins. I mean, educated to use Bitcoins or or physically able, having access to internet, to computer, to mobile phone, and so on and so forth. I believe like only 50% of the people on the world have access to a mobile phone, and this is not necessarily a smartphone, you know? So say that 3.5 billion people have access to a mobile phone. Uh, what amount of these people have actually smartphones that they can say they, they can sell Bitcoins with? I mean, there are countries that are not that much, you know, globalized and integrated, where people either cannot afford this or they're not let to be afford to to use these bitcoins so i don't think that the demand is uh, endless if the demand was endless then the trend with uh, uh i mean uh, uh if the demand was endless then the price was going to increase like forever and as i already said i don't know currency of that type yet where the price has been increasing forever and where pe people are actually getting richer and richer and richer and richer more than everyone else and you know and this continues like uh, forever because if you're currently because with the bitcoin as i said for a couple of years the price increased like from three hundred dollars to twenty thousand dollars this is like uh, how many percent i'm gonna calculate it right now uh, all right so the price started at three hundred and fifty dollars something like that for Two years, three hundred and fifty dollars divided by twenty thousand uh, dollars. Was that the way I need to do? What is that? The zero point ninety eight of. Oh my God! I forgot how to calculate percentage. That's ridiculous. Uh, so all right, three hundred and fifty dollars divided by twenty dollar. Uh, twenty dollars creates. Uh, uh no actually it should be the opposite way because i'm calculating the opposite thing absolutely i need to divide this by this and then there you go i get confused because this is like the hype is like the price jumped 57 times you know 57 times this is like huge uh actually 50 uh 57.14 there you go this is how much it, it jumped something like that yeah five thousand seven hundred and fourteen percent is what Lane said exactly this is how much the Bitcoin price jumped do you know a currency like that that jumped that created such of a big big move for two years I don't I really don't the, the biggest thing that I've actually seen in my like adequate life was uh, say like uh, three years ago whenever uh, the, uh, the Swiss National Bank in Switzerland they announced negative interest rates at minus 0.75%. And, and this is still going. I mean, their interest rates are still at minus 0.75%. This was the thing that I saw. And the price, like for a couple hours, dropped with 20%. 20%. And do you know what type of a reaction this created from society from this negative like interest rate? It was like crazy. And this was the biggest thing that I saw. And now we're seeing a currency that actually creates like 6,000% growth for a couple of years. Years. I don't think this could continue eternally. And the reason I don't think this can continue is because it is controlled by humans who are actually creating supply and demand. 
and uh, the eternal demand, in my opinion, cannot go because uh, because people's wallets are limited and people's psychology will not let this happen. This is my personal opinion about that. Uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to say them or any other comments. I'm really happy like to discuss such things uh, with you guys. It's interesting for me. And now I'm going to do like a uh, technical analysis of the Bitcoin in the meantime. I'm going to switch to uh see a smaller chart how, how do i control these uh these charts over here? yeah yeah there you go uh let's do let's do five here there you go five here uh zooming no actually i'm gonna do one year because i mean we saw how high the bitcoin price can go and now i want to like uh uh, the thing that I want to do is to position some uh, Fibonacci levels, the first thing that I want to do, and to see if this is going to respond to some of the Fibonacci levels, eventually 61.8 starting from uh, from here, or actually from here, and eventually to say this is 30, 38.2 uh, starting from here. Uh, all right. I'm not exactly sure how to use this, this chart, so I'm currently like uh, Fibonacci time zone, Fibonacci speed resistance trend based uh, Fibonacci retracement there you go that's what I'm looking for all right so let, let's check that out there you go all right that that's that's interesting there you go when I position the Fibonacci level I see that the bounce and the retracement comes exactly at the 61.8 percentage and this is uh, from the start of the hype uh, in the beginning of 2017 until nowadays now I want to reposition these Fibonacci levels and catch like the most re recent trend that is over here. And I see that the price uh, is actually nearly going, uh, actually it is going in the in the 78.6% uh, zone. I mean, uh, I believe really that there is some kind of a psychological factor behind this, uh, which we should definitely take into consideration when we trade Bitcoins. And in this case, Fibonacci levels are pretty handy in my opinion. Second thing that I want to do is to switch to a smaller chart, say one here. All right. Yeah, there you go. Uh, there is a trend that is forming, which is uh, very important in my opinion. And this trend is pretty accurate in my opinion. I mean, it is getting tested for four times currently. One, two, three, and now four. This is like a pretty, pretty reliable trend line in my opinion. And in case case it gets broken it, it can either be it can also be considered as a channel you know all right so we see approximately where the bitcoin goes and where the bitcoin is returning there you go we see that the price is hitting this trend line for a second time so if this trend line breaks then the technical data will tell us that the price might increase and actually technical data represents a psychological factor behind bitcoin so maybe we can taking this into consideration at the same time i would like to do something else i think i have a uh, i have a like an inverted head and shoulders pattern right here where we have like the first shoulder going here uh then we have a second shoulder there you go then we have the head coming right over here all right trend line there you go and now I'm, I'm going to draw the last shoulder. And the interesting thing is that the price is currently testing the neckline of this inverted head and shoulders pattern. So if this head and shoulders pattern gets conf confirmed and the price breaks the trend, maybe this will give us some kind of a, an idea where the price can go in the short term. Uh, because uh, as you guys probably know, uh, when the head and shoulders pattern or the inverted head and shoulders pattern actually break, uh, uh, it leads to a price move equal to the size of the head and shoulders pattern measured from the tip of the head uh, to the neckline. And now I'm, I'm trying to like to, to, oh, oops, what did happen? Please sign up to continue. All right, so I'm going to do a trick. I'm going to restart this and I'm going to restart my chart again. <laughs> so I'll be able to see it again. All right, launch chart. All right, so I'm currently looking at NASDAQ, uh, Apple. So now let's switch to the Bitcoin American dollar again. All 
All right, Len says another thing. Technicals hint to going up back to 20K, both head and shoulders and, and, and FIPS. No, I cannot say that it's gonna go to 20 to the 20K again. But uh, all right, let's try to do it only with the head and shoulders pattern. So I'm putting again the trend line that I was talking about. Uh, there you go. All right, cancel. And now I would like to measure, uh, all right, rectangle. I'm going to, oh yeah, I'm gonna put the neckline as well. The neckline is between these two tops. There you go. This is the head and shoulders pattern. The neckline between the tops. And I'm gonna put simply a rectangle same way I do on the Better Trader platform. There you go. This is the size of the hand and shoulders pattern. So if we take this rectangle and position it here, uh, say if the price breaks the neckline and the trend line at the same time, maybe uh, according to the technical data, uh, there might be a run to $15,000. You never know. Something like that, something in this area. But for $20,000, I don't know. I mean, uh, I don't know either, uh, even for like, you know, for $15,000, but according to the to the well-known chart patterns and the trend line we're having, maybe we can have some kind of a, uh, some kind of a run in case the trend breaks. The other thing that we can do is again, to use the, the Fibonacci retracement thing. Uh, oh, actually, no, that, that's not what I was looking for. Yeah, all right. Uh, what was that? Uh, Elliot, wait. Okay, so where were my Fibonacci retracement? There you go. We can measure this bearish trend and see if this level, if this target matches with another Fibonacci level, but I don't I don't see this actually. I wanted to see if the top of this target of the rectangle matches with some of the Fibonacci level. And I'm currently like forcing it in order to be able to, to match it, but even with forcing it, I cannot do it, I think. So maybe eventually the 61.8 level can go in that area, but maybe not. Uh, but hey, notice that the 61 point level approximately matches with the $15,000 level. There you go. Uh, approximately goes in the $15,000 area. So this might be some kind of an area that attracts the price. I don't know, in terms of psychology. So this is something that we might want to take into consideration and now i'm going to zoom to to a smaller chart eventually uh, year to date say something like that no actually i am on year to six months so i'll be able to get like a better picture of what are, what is happening here yeah another thing that i want to measure and i'm going to turn off my fibonacci levels now and i'm going to place them again there you go to see where is the price actually retracing and see that this happens at the 38.2 Fibonacci level. There you go. Close to this area. If we take the bottom of the trend to the top of the trend, see that the price retraces from 38.2. So the price is currently being sandwiched between 38.2 and the bearish trend line. So one of these two levels will break at some point because it cannot continue until forever. But until then, I don't think we have like an idea what's gonna happen. The thing that I see currently is that the Bitcoin is attempting to bounce in bearish direction from its price. And it is currently breaking something like a trend. When I switch to the three month chart, zooming in back, there you go. We see something like a trend line, uh, which got interrupted. Ooh, ooh, what, what did happen? Yeah, oh, all right, there you go. Trend line, which got interrupted uh, eventually. That's the trend, got interrupted, price bounces, and let's see if the price is gonna decrease afterward, because after, after, after all, this is a bearish trend. But still, this is what I wanted to tell you guys uh, about uh, uh, my section about the Bitcoin technical analysis. I wanted to show you that trend line, I wanted to show you that head and shoulders pattern and the Fibonacci level, because I believe these are like uh, uh, hot, hot topics currently. So now I'm going to turn off my chart, and I'm going to switch to the, questions and answers section. Although we answered a lot of questions, I still wanna encourage you guys to ask other questions if you have for me, uh, because if it is going to be a pleasure for me to answer all these questions. All right. Uh, let's see if 
hope you guys send me some other questions. I'm currently looking at my questions section. Simply lose the questions section and write whatever you want to ask me. Uh, it's going to be a pleasure for me to answer. All right. All right. And in the meantime, I think I can turn on my camera so you can see my pretty face again. And here I am. I think you're guys able to see me again. Notice that I turned on my lights because it's currently dark here. And uh, I have these lights uh, like on the ceiling, which are like many and many and small. And now when I put my head over here, I look like, like Jesus <laughs> with lights around my head. All right. All right, let's check the question section again. All right, I see no other questions from you guys. Uh, all right. Well, then the thing that I can say to you is that I was very happy to conduct this webinar session uh, for you guys. I hope you liked it. I, I just want to say that the purpose of this session was like to uh, introduce some uh, 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 some newbie information for people that are, that are not uh, very familiar with Bitcoin because currently I get a lot of uh, questions and I get a lot from people asking me what is hey Damien what is Bitcoin where is the price going to go and something about things we need to consider and so on and so forth so I just wanted to I just wanted to let people know what they're what they're dealing with I'm not saying that you cannot make any profit with Bitcoin totally I'm not saying this you can actually make profit with Bitcoin but if you guys know what you're doing, if you don't know what you're doing, guys, simply either learn what you're doing and then try dealing with it or simply don't do it. Because if you don't know what you're doing, this huge volatility might like, you know, melt out your bank account because the volatility is really, really big. I mean, for, for two months, Bitcoin lost like 50% of its price. This is crazy. I mean, I mean reputable companies on the stock exchange don't do this you know they don't lose like 50 percent of their their value reputable companies i repeat no also no not either the the other currencies the physical currency the standard currency they're they're also not doing such a big big of a moves no matter what happens with interest rates with inflation uh or with other big uh, economic uh, factors like uh, say like uh, unemployment uh, payrolls and so forth so all right oh <laughs> Adeo jacob says thank you and stay warm yeah <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> i will stay warm although outside is like minus 14 degrees celsius uh, uh, as i guys said i'm currently conducting this webinar session in extremely heavy weather conditions uh, outside it's minus 13 degrees celsius snow is going above uh, above one meter the road to the big town is closed uh, the wind is blowing with 80 degrees <laughs> celsius bye bye from sunny mexico <laughs> is what luis rivera saying to me uh, good for you uh, by the way bulgaria is a country that has four seasons it's like uh, summer spring uh, uh spring summer, fall and winter and winters are likely to be like very cold sometimes summers are likely to be very warm so so yeah that's the that's the thing so the shovel is way to like to to get the snow out of <laughs> of our uh, out of our yard and our street all right guys thank you very much for watching it was a pleasure for me to conduct this webinar session for you <laughs> thanks from chile california <laughs> yeah you make me laugh guys all right thank you very much for attending this webinar session and stay tuned for notification emails for the other webinar we're planning to reduce by the way the number of emails we're sending to you regarding the webinars uh because we're going to integrate and this calendar will give you access to all the information you need to see the events that are coming up and also uh where you can uh, actually register for these events all right guys thank you very much pleasure for me uh again uh bye bye from uh, like windy bulgaria <laughs> and uh, see you next time bye